Welcome back to another episode of Espro Suck Doors. In this episode, we're going to be doing a review on the Canon M50. It's been a little bit since we've done a video. Unfortunately, Charlie and I have both been very busy. Why not get out a video on the gear that we use? So, without further ado, let's get into some of the footage that we have taken with the Canon M50 just to show how awesome it is. So, let's start off with why we decided to get the Canon M50, starting with number one, the price. Oh, you can pick up the Canon M50 for around 700 bucks. It's a really good affordable starter camera that actually has some really good power. You are actually watching it right now. This is shooting on 1080p, so this is only 1080p, but it's coming at a higher frame rate, and then I upscale it once I actually get into editing software. I also do color grade in our editing software, which is Filmora 10. So if you don't know, I am an inspiring videographer, meaning I want to turn my passion for videography into an income eventually. So I'm pushing towards that, meaning I'm investing in gear, not just for the channel, but for a future towards videography. So the Canon 50 can shoot all the way up to 4K, 24 frames per second, but unfortunately it does have a crop factor. So just to give you a instance of that crop factor, uh, just to show you, this is as wide as this goes. This is currently at 15 millimeters. Shows pretty wide shot. Now, if we switch to 4K, it's going to have a crop factor that's going to zoom in actually a decent amount. You're going to have to be farther away from your subject, such as yourself or whatever you are trying to record. Now, let me just give you an instance of what that would look like if you're shooting in 4K. So now, as you can see, this is what 4K looks like. Not that big of a difference here, but the crop factor is decently heavy. Um, so it is like... I haven't moved the camera at all, but the crop factor is pretty heavy right now, so it's kind of hard, and if you actually look, it's like having a hard time keeping me in focus. Uh, it's like kind of seeking for me, so it's a little annoying. So if you are using this mode, you probably are going to want to keep it on manual focus um, just all the time unless you're recording yourself, but it kind of does go in and out on that focus a decent amount. So. Just something to keep in mind with the 4K is that it does have a decent crop factor. That's why I can't tend to keep it on the 1080p unless I'm like um, needing specific shots that I want more a bit more of resolution, whether I want to zoom in or whatever. So I will up that to the 4K. But unfortunately, the 4K on the M50 only goes all the way up to 24 frames per second, and I'm, this buffering trying to keep me focused is really annoying me. So I'm going to switch it back to actually 1080p. Okay, there we are. Now that we're back to 1080p, this is looking quite a bit better in my opinion. Now, I do upscale. What that means is basically I take a 1080p file from the M50, I put it on the computer, it put it into Filmora 11, and then I upscale. Basically, I set the project as being a 4K project, and then I export it in 4K again. So it's basically taking that 1080p and it's turning into like a fake 4K. It, it looks really good, and if you go back through a lot of our videos, that's what we do with most of our footage. It doesn't have the greatest battery life of all time, so I would suggest if you do get the Canon M50 to get a lot of batteries, but that's just a little side note to get a lot of batteries, but... Um, what I will say is if you attach something like a Rode Video Micro to it, which is currently what I'm running, it actually sounds really, really good. You are currently listening to the Canon M50 with the Rode Video Micro on it, so if you like that, that's your preference. If you would like a different mic, definitely pick up a different one, but I personally, with this camera, do like a mic on it because, well, I'll just give you a reference to what it sounds like without one. So without a microphone, this is kind of what it sounds like. Kind of a little more tinny in my opinion, not my favorite. Just a little break. It, it it works, but it's just not too professional and doesn't sound the best. This this sorry, this is just really good. From what I've noticed, this camera can shoot for around 30 to 45 minutes on one battery during the summer. Now in the winter time, your battery life crashes a lot because those batteries really don't like being cold. So I would suggest if you are shooting time outside, pick up a few more batteries. You will not regret it at all in the least because it is worth it, in my opinion, of course, because, well, you're going to be running through them a lot from the cold. Now, a lot of times what you can do is you can stuff the old batteries back in your pocket, warm them up a bit, and then they'll have a little bit more juice to go. But just something to keep in mind is if you are in cold, these batteries don't hold up too well because they are pretty small. Now here, here's what the camera looks like in decently low light. All I have on is that one light right there. Um, 
Now if you actually look, I don't have any light else on in this room. If you turn it up to this is ISO 4000, it's getting really grainy, but it doesn't look like terrible. You can still kind of see what's going on. Uh, or you obviously can see what's going on, but you are going to get a bit of grain in the background, but it looks good considering this room's pretty dark, so it brightens things up and it actually looks really good, but as you can see, with the light on, it looks a whole lot better, especially if you have some natural light coming in like a window or something, you should be perfectly fine, but in case you were wondering what this thing looks like in low light, yeah, definitely not too bad in low light, so just give you one more look around, there you go, but let's get back on to having a nice light on. But this should have given you a reference to what this thing looks like with low light. Okay, so you want to know a fun part about just all the footage that I just shot? About a good decent chunk of it was filmed without the mic being plugged in. Meaning it's just straight Canon M50 audio. So hopefully that was okay. I'm guessing it sounded pretty tinny. But hopefully you're going to get a good idea as to what the audio sounds like on the Canon M50. If you do like it, then... Obviously, maybe that's for you, but I would suggest picking up a microphone no matter which camera you're running. So, there is video. That. Some of the frame rates you can shoot in for video are 1080p 24 frames per second, 1080p 30 frames per second, 1080p 60 frames per second, 4K 24 frames per second. So, you do have those options, as well as a slow mo 720p. It's it just HD, it's technically just HD. It doesn't look too bad, but it's super slow mo. I think that one show, shoots at 120, I want to say. So, if you are wanting a higher slow mo frame rate, then you can go for the slow mo setting, which to get in that, you just go under your settings in the Canon M50. And then you just go to your frame rate section, and then it's in there in specialty. Like, you can't just go through like the start menu, you actually have to go through the menu menu to end up get it to it so that you can actually turn it up to the super slow mo mode, which actually looks pretty cool. I will show a clip of that right now. Without further ado, if you did enjoy, make sure to go down below, hit like and subscribe, and comment down below any questions you may have or any future videos you'd like to see. But without, without any further delay, God bless. We'll see you in the next one.